Hello, I'm Zach Attack, and let's talk about the console commands in Tech 80. So when you start up Tech 80, this is what you see. It starts off by saying, hello, type help for help, which is a redundant statement, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Type help because we need help. It says usage, like type help followed by whatever it is that I want help with. So help version gives me the version number of Tick80 that I'm using. Uh, it's confusing. So maybe we should just go through them one by one. The command that you'll use most often is this one, surf. That opens this thing. Now with your controller or with your keyboard or on Android with the on-screen buttons, you can navigate through here and find games to play. So this will be the stuff on your computer. Tick80.com is if you want to look at, I pressed A for that, it says A to select. This is the stuff that's on the website that people have uploaded, other people like you, because you can make your own games and go put them on there. Go to play, go to games. Remember these two dots for going up a folder? Two dots goes up a folder, remember that, we're going to come back to it. Go into games, there's new, recent, and then a list of featured things. There's the Tick 80 D make of Super Meat Boy. I should come back to this one. Okay, pressing A at this point would run the game. Pressing B goes back, the same as the two dots at the top. Pressing Y opens this game on the website, where you can play it in your browser, and you can leave comments or like for the developer to see, so you can support their stuff. Pressing the back button on the controller or escape on your keyboard goes back to console. And you'll notice that this part, after the word surf, indicates that we were actually going through folders because that's your directory structure. There's tick80.com, the play folder, the games folder. How do you do that if you're in the console? Well, it's easy. It's the command cd followed by the folder you want to be in. But how do you know what folder to be in? Okay, ls. It's going to be a bit slow because this is coming off the website. That's what's in this folder long list of things. Page up and page down on your keyboard. We'll scroll up and down if you so wish. CD with two dots. Remember I said we're coming back to this? Goes up a folder. So we are currently in the folder games. Now we're only in play. CD two dots takes us up to the Dickity website. CD two dots takes us up to our local file system. And now dir tells us what's in this folder. Directory listing. That's an old command prompt slash DOS thing. If you're used to Mac or Linux, you would know this one, ls, but it does the same thing. This is what's in my folder for Tick80. So let's go into this classics folder as an example. CD, class, I don't have to complete the file name because pressing tab auto completes the folder name for me. Press enter, now I'm in the classics folder. What's in here? In here is the folder with the files for the Pong tutorial, which we did recently, the link in the description. There's also a test folder, and then the license for the GitHub and the README for the GitHub, because this is also the repo that's available on GitHub with the code for the tutorials. Then I want to go into the Pong folder. Let's go see what's in there. Maybe ls to see the files. Okay, there's a bunch of Pong files, one for each episode of the tutorial. So let's load one of them. To load a file, we type load, followed by the name of the file. Now, if I just type up to here and I press tab, it can't autocomplete the entire path because there's multiple files that I could be referring to. It completes as far as it can. So if you look here, you'll see that I, type, I started typing PO, so it knows I'm not looking for sprites or collision demo. I'm looking for one of the Pong files. But between the Pong files, they're all the same up until we get to the number. So autocomplete up to the number. If I tab again, it actually shows me all the possible options. Now we'll probably want to load the newest one, 13. You don't have to put the file extension, but pressing tab will put the file extension. Doesn't really make a difference. Enter loads the cartridge. And now that's the next command. It says type run to run that cartridge. There's a thing that we made. You can move the paddles, you can play the game. Not going to worry about it too much now. 
we want to make a new game we want to start making our own game so let's get to a folder we'll just go back out of these using the change directory dot dot to go up a directory syntax now we're back in the root or our, our folder storage folder for tick 80 ls or dir to see what's in here that seems like a safe place but I don't just want my new game to be sitting here in this mess of other files so let's make a directory for it mkdir make dir plus the name of the dir uh, console hyphen tut for tutorial folder names can have hyphens and underscores I believe spaces get a bit complicated so I would suggest you avoid them created console tut folder cd co Consultant is the only folder that starts with that, so it auto-completes, press enter, and in this folder, there's nothing. Now it says you can type demo to install demo cards to this folder, but I do find those demos are a little advanced for starting users, and often looking at the code of a finished project isn't very helpful because you don't understand the thinking process of how the coder got to where they are. So let's just start with a new cartridge. You can't just type new. Well, you can, but it's going to be mad at you. You type new followed by the language you want to code in. Now, by default, TIG80 uses Lua. L-U-A. Lua. The first episode of the Pong tutorial explains why. But you can also use, as is listed here, Ruby, JavaScript, MoonScript, Fennel, I don't know what this one is. I don't know what this one is. Ren, I've heard of, but I haven't tried. That's WebAssembly. That's Python. So you can code in any of these languages with varying levels of support. The thing is, because originally TIC80 supported Lua, most demos and tutorials are in Lua. And personally, I think if you're learning to code, it's also probably one of the best languages to learn to code in. But that's that. Mi I might be biased. So we're making a new cartridge using Lua. Type that, press enter, a new cart has been created. And then if we press escape or F1, there's our code. It's a fresh new cartridge based on the default cartridge. It has the basic MIT license inserted. It says the script language is Lua. It has our initial version set plus all the starting code. We'll go into how the coding works in another one or go look at a tutorial but there you go now you can start coding and making your thing it doesn't have a name if i'm in my code and i press Control s it actually says it can't save the file because the file doesn't have a card name so let's save save what do we call this um cool thing it'll add the dot tick automatically so there we go now if you press Control s cool thing dot tick saved so we know it's saving we know it's fine the same as with anything else we can type run to run it this by the way is the the default new cartridge for tick 80 all it has is the little character and up down left right that moves them around plus a little timer animation that switches between two sprites it's it's basic teaches you a surprising amount of what goes on in tick 80 if you want to dive into this was it 24 lines of code 20 lines of code okay so that's how we make a file that's how we save it so now we can code our thing run it test it it's in its own folder but sometimes i accidentally save a thing under the set under the wrong name or i download a cartridge from somewhere else and i don't want it anymore how do i get rid of it dell deletes a file cool thing dot tick if I just press tab it auto completes because that's the only thing in this folder now it is important to note with any other situation it will auto complete the name you don't have to type the file name in the case of deleting if I don't type the the file extension it'll ask are you sure you want to delete and you say yes but if I now list the directories file still there it will only delete the file if I provide it with the full file name including the extension it acts exactly the same but the difference is now the file's gone so keep that in mind also just because i deleted the file doesn't mean my code is gone 
but this is the sort of ticketty version of cutting a text out of a Word document and then closing the file. It's still sitting in tick 80, but it's not saved anywhere. So if something goes wrong now, it's gone. So save the file, probably change to something else before you try and delete it, just so that you don't end up with this ephemeral code sitting here that may at any moment be destroyed just by a wrong keystroke. Other commands, as discussed in our how to tick 80 uh, coding dev mode thing, there's the config command which, if your file wasn't saved, it would have prompted you to save the file, but in our case it's deleted, so it's not going to care. This loads, instead of code, the config file for tick 80, which allows you to change the colors of your interface and keywords in your code, and turn these effects on and off. There's a video for this, so just go have a look. Uh, config also allows you to save the config, to reset it if it's broken or so on. If I'm in Say, for instance, I'm in this thing. Okay, there's sprites here, and I'm having a hard time with the sprite editor. I would like to edit this in, I don't know, Photoshop or whatever. Export is our next command. Now, this one is a little tricky. So, in this case, I am actually, let me just clear the screen. I am actually going to invoke the help command on this one because it'll help if you can read along. Okay, if you just put export, just the word export, It'll give you an HTML page with your game embedded inside it, which you can almost just like that take and load up onto itch.io for people to play. Native builds are not supported in the normal open source version of Tick80. That is a pro feature, so don't worry about that too much for now. This is what we're looking at. Export sprites slash map slash sound effects, music, there's a bunch of them, but in our case we want to export sprites and we give it a file name I believe um, let's make it spritey things so we know it's ours spritey things exports a PNG so now there's a PNG on my computer somewhere that I'd like to open in Photoshop but how do I find it? type the word folder this will do two things. Firstly, it'll show you here in the console the address on your computer where you currently are, where Tick80 stores its files, its cartridges and stuff. What it'll also do is pop up Explorer or Finder or Nautilus or whatever your file browser of choice is on that folder so that you can get to it. And then from there, you can just carry on your business, open it in Photoshop, change whatever you want to change and when you're done come back here and type import followed by the same stuff sprites and then the name of the file if if you had made changes and saved it as spritey things new .png, then that's the file you would want to refer to whatever but you would use import to import the stuff that you exported I'm not going to do it now because I don't have any examples. Okay, other commands. These are less important, but commands you might want to know. Let me quickly just tell spritey things. So we have an empty folder. Now let's try this demo thing. Demo. Downloads a bunch of stuff. There's a bunny folder and then a benchmark. There's a bits per pixel. That has to do with the palette stuff car I think is a 3d car there's quest that I'm always using to demonstrate how things work and then there's a sound effects example and a Tetris example let's quickly load up Tetris run Tetris sound on new game hey look I'm playing Tetris I don't have hard drop I can't rotate the other way there's no hold. I doubt I'd be able to do a, a proper teaspoon. But hey, someone made Tetris in Tick 80. And it actually has a little animation when the road disappears. This is not bad. See? Making games is fun and not particularly difficult. Okay. Oh, cool. Did you see the art? Look at the tiles. <laughs> 
See, it's fun to scratch around in other people's games. There's the code. You can just look at it and learn. Save scores. I'd like to see how this saves scores. That could be useful. Okay. When you're done with all of that, say, for instance, I was busy with that game and I accidentally dropped the console. Resume. Puts me right back where I was. Literally the exact frame where I quit the game. If dev mode was off, the option of resume in the menu would have taken you back to the game. That's what that command does. In my case, I have dev mode turned on, so pressing escape drops me to console. In this case, I can type menu to get the menu. That resume game is the previous command we just did. Reset game resets the cartridge as if it had just been loaded, clearing all your progress, and potentially fixing anything that went wrong during the play. Close game is the same as hitting escape in my case. It just closes the game. And then the last command is exit. You can probably guess what that does. It closes tick 80. Same as pressing Alt F4. Same as clicking the close button in the top right corner of the thing. And that is all the console commands, at least 90% of the console commands in tick 80 and how they work. If there's any of them that you need further help with or you can't remember quite how they work, just type help followed by, I don't know, CD. And it tells you how it works. CD in the name of where you want to go. CD slash, I don't actually know what that is. that root. Yep, that's a root. And CD dot dot to go up a folder. You can't go higher up than the top. Or export. Here's how the export thing works. That about covers it. So after this, you should be able to make your way around the Tick80 console like a pro and you know, make and delete files and make copies of files and whatever you need. But the most important thing is, have fun.